the biggest entrepreneur platform on the planet. This is Business Rockstars. This is Business Rockstars. I'm Brittany Whitney, and my guest today is Danielle Bernstein, founder of Shop We Were What, Mo Assist, and We Gave What. Danielle, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me. So tell me a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey and how you got your start. Where to even start? Okay. So I'll kind of give you the spiel because I've been doing this for 10 plus years now, but we were what actually started as a street style blog when I was at FIT as a student. And so I was photographing street style around campus as this daily source of outfit inspiration for what to wear. Um, and then, you know, slowly but surely within the first year, transition that into a personal style blog, which was at the same time that Instagram was created and then transition from an online platform to social media and started growing my business on Instagram and then started doing sponsorship deals with brands, growing my own brands. And then now here we are. Amazing. And, um, how did you start your blogging journey? Like at what point did you really notice your career was taking off? There were a few moments throughout my career that were sort of this, I made it moment. One of them was when I surpassed 1 million followers. The second was when I was on Forbes 30 under 30 at the age of 24. And then the most recent one was becoming a New York Times bestselling author. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so as you said, you surpassed a million followers. You know, I have about 2.5 million on Instagram, correct? Yeah. Um, how did you kind of grow your following and how did you pave your path? Because as you said, you were kind of the first to start the whole influencer marketing, if you will. My following is the product of organic growth over the past you know, decade. And I really have sort of pioneered the influencer industry and with the other OG influence have really set forth the best business practices for how an influencer can make a career out of doing this. And do you have any tips or tricks um, for people watching who, you know, want to break into the blogging space, but they feel like it's too oversaturated at this point? There's a couple of things that, that I tell people that want to break into the space. And, and the most important and maybe sounds a little cheesy is to find your niche. Like you really have to find a space in the market and fill that. That doesn't exist. And you have to be different. You have to be consistent. And you have to really treat it like a business. You have to have a content calendar and consistency is key. So it definitely is not just like a part-time, like fluff, fluffy job. Like we really are super strict with what we do here and we work really hard. And tell me about Mo Assist and why you started this workflow tool for influencers. So Mo Assist is essentially the first project management tool for the influencer industry. And it really serves to solve all the pain points of basically staying organized, the communication between brands and an influencer, the approval process, and then being able to actually invoice and get paid. So if you don't have a Mo, who is my longtime assistant turned CEO, basically, she's been with me for eight years. Uh, if you don't have a Mo, you don't have an agent, you don't have a team surrounding you, let Mo be that for you. And so that's really why we created it because as you know, the influencer industry is huge now. And as you kind of are under the spotlight in a sense, um, you know, people can critique you and people can say nasty things to you. How do you kind of block out the noise and still allow yourself to share to all the people following you? Yeah. You know, I have such a supportive, incredible following that keeps coming back to purchase, not only from my, from my brand, but from the brands that I'm promoting. So I know how strong and powerful my following is because the proof is really in the pudding. And, you know, I used to always say haters mean you're doing something right. And so I, I keep trying to remind myself of that because it can get really intense at times, but you know, I like to just think, you know, the more, the bigger you get, the more you might have people that don't like you. And it's sort of just what comes with the territory. Yeah, that's very true. Um, and you started your own fashion line. What was the first step you took um, once you realized, okay, I'm really serious about starting this? So I started my line as a collaboration between me and another brand. And when we realized that that swimsuit collaboration was the best selling swim of the summer and surpassed sales goals within a matter of days, uh, we, we realized we had something here and I really grew, I didn't go to school for design. You know, I really grew passionate about designing and creating collections 
and had an incredible team to do that with. So it was about finding the right business partner at the right time and realizing that we could create a product that didn't really exist in the market and give that to a customer that was looking for something new. And where do you find your inspiration from? Because I'm sure at times it, things can feel stale or you just need to freshen up a bit. Yeah, uh, tons of different places from my travels, a lot of vintage inspiration from editorials uh, and really just pieces that I wish I had in my own wardrobe. And that's really what I like to create. I design for myself and I have a great team that I design with. And so, you know, we bounce ideas off each other all the time and then we bring our products to life and we really focus on fit and quality. And that's why our customers keep coming back. What would you say the most rewarding aspect of growing your business is to such a huge success? Um, and what has been the most challenging aspect? You know, the most rewarding aspect has really come to fruition this year with the creation of We Gave What, which is the charitable arm of We Wore What. And, and really, I've grown such a massive platform and have access to such a huge audience. And so We Gave What really was created to serve as this middleman between small businesses and great organizations and a wider audience. So the, the point of it was really, how can I lend my platform to you? How can I help get your message across, raise awareness for your organization and help your small business during such a tough time? And that has been so rewarding, the most fulfilling work of my career. We have been able to help keep dozens of small businesses afloat, raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for different organizations and really partner with these nonprofits in a way that's long-term. And it's all about those long-term relationships. And we like to keep things in the family. That's amazing. Congratulations. Um, tell me about your books. You're also an author. So This Is Not a Fashion Story is my book that came out this past May and then was shortly after a New York Times bestseller. And it really was just a glimpse into my life. You know, I have grown up in front of the camera of social media, but there's so much about me that my followers, my audience in the world didn't know. And so I wanted to tell this coming of age story that is my story of living in New York City, starting my business, going through many failed relationships, failed business decisions, and all along the way to get to the point of where I am today. So it's the first part of my story because I'm only 28 years old and I still will have a lot to tell, but this is the first part of my story that I really wanted to share with my audience so they can get to know all of me. And what advice do you have for any entrepreneur really who has kind of hit that brick wall and they feel stuck and they feel uninspired and they feel like they want to give up? I think you have to, I mean, that's such a tough question, but I think you have to really take a step back and rediscover why you are doing what you are doing and what your goal is. And then once you know why you're doing it and what your goal is, you can rediscover the passion of, of, of really working towards that goal. And so it, it's definitely not an easy question to answer. And, and I get that block all the time, but I take a day off and, and that's okay. And, you know, being in front of social media, it's a 24 seven job. And I have come to learn that taking a day off is sometimes so healthy and so helpful. And speaking of that, do you believe in work-life balance? Do you think it's kind of one big myth? How do you turn off essentially? You know, I don't have the answers to that. Mm -hmm. I am constantly working on finding a better work-life balance. And it's really all about communication, especially with my boyfriend and my family and my friends, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it beforehand. Like, you know, I'm going to go off my social tonight. I'm not really going to share what we're doing. Let's keep this moment special. So it's really just about openly communicating with the people around you. And was there ever a point in your business where you felt like it was too much, where you wanted to kind of throw in the towel and give up? always. <laughs> I have those moments all the time, but then I look around me and I have my amazing team sitting here and I have, you know, people that are relying on me to keep the wheels turning. And that to me is what motivates me the most and keeps me going. How would you say your management style is as a boss? because you are a boss. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we love to have fun. Uh, we love to be really communicative. Like we, it's hard to describe because it is such a fine balance between boss and friend, but I think it's really just about respect. And we all have a lot of respect for each other. And so that's how I like to manage my team. And I don't even like the word manage because really they manage me and my time and they're my, more my boss than I am theirs. Yeah. Uh, I want to go back to when you started your fashion line. What was the, um, what was the point where you had the idea and then how long did it take to actually get to market? 
we started first the collaboration. I'll have to actually look back in this, but uh, I guess like four years ago was the first collaboration. And then, you know, we deal with production calendars where you basically design a year in advance. So while we were designing our second collaboration, we were also working on the launch collection for the, it as a standalone brand. And then during that, you know, we build the website and we put together the team and we work at the production and uh, the, all the logistics. And there's a lot that goes into it. And I think that the biggest misconception with designing and, and my brand in general is just how far in advance everything happens. You know, right now I have designed up until 2023. Wow. And who knows what the trends are going to be in 2023. Yeah, I was just going to ask, how do you like stay ahead? <laughs> you know, that's exactly it. I'm not, I'm not really designing based on, I'm just, I'm just creating stuff that I like. And so I'm hoping that that will be in, in the moment. And I hope, you know, for the past 10 years being an influencer, it's, I guess I've sort of proven that, but you know, you do never know. Some things could be a mess. And if you could go back in time and tell yourself one piece of advice or however many pieces of advice, what would you tell yourself when you were first starting out? So I actually wrote this during the beginning of the pandemic. I wrote, dear younger me, you know less than you think you do. So continue to learn. Stop letting him treat you like shit. It's going to be okay. Learn about money and how to save it. Do not fuck with your hair. Excuse my French. Be professional. Read the fine print. Enjoy this journey and please be more present. Learn from these mistakes. Stop partying so much. Be decisive and assertive, but sweet. Don't avoid your past. You need to talk about it. Focus on your goals and update them often. Don't settle. Don't make excuses for yourself. Be accountable. Check your ego. The world owes you nothing. Forgive yourself and forgive others. Have high expectations, but learn from mistakes and grow from them. That was a mouthful. It was perfect. <laughs> yeah. I love Sorry, it. Sorry, I know that was long. You can cut it up if you want. <laughs> no, no, that was, that was great. Um, and one of my last questions is, do you have any tips for how to style yourself at home for Zoom calls and Zoom interviews? So I just threw on a really cute sweater that had some great detailing. And I think that, you know, typically I would do a t-shirt with a blazer, um, always throw a blazer over a hoodie as well. I think it's just about wearing something that is flattering and, and maybe not too baggy, but not too loose, or, but, not too, uh, but not too tight, and just finding something that has nice color and then setting up a nice light like this for your calls. <laughs> <laughs> the ring lights are great. <laughs> the ring light is necessary. Um, and where can people learn more about you? Uh, they can follow me on Instagram at WeWareWhat. That is the quickest way to get to me. Danielle, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much.